Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to another in-depth Sherman video, and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at the details I added to my Asuka model M4A1 late production. Now this is going to try to replicate a press steel production Sherman as it may look like during the Operation Cobra Normandy breakouts in July of 1944. So we're going to start with the turret and work our way down. So first things I added, of course, were the cast texture to both the turret and to the hull, as M4A1 had both cast turret and cast hull, and this was replicated using Mr. Surfacer 500 that was stippled on over several layers. I also added some stowage uh, to the bustle using a Legend Productions resin insert that I believe is actually from their M4A1 set. And I also added some resin tie down loops uh, from Tiger Model Design just to add that extra bit of detail and some straps to uh, loop them through those tie down loops with some Tamiya tape. So moving on to the turret roof, I added the cast numbering to the turret roof using Archerfine Transfer's 3D decals, which they have all the foundry and cast numbering um, for Sherman kits. I also replaced the, the tank's uh, searchlight with a replacement piece from Tiger Model Design, which is a beautiful one-piece resin uh, drop-in replacement as well as uh, you replacing the kit's periscopes from one from Tiger Model Design also, as the kit periscopes lack the internal detail if you have the hatches open, and the uh, Tiger Model Design kits have those included. I also added the retaining chains to the 50 cal mount, as well as the pins, uh, which is just a simple but really uh, worthwhile uh, detail to add, as it adds a lot of interest to your, your 50 mounts. So here's another few of the searchlight, so it's a pretty fragile um, replacement, so you do have to be a little bit careful installing it, but it is fantastic, it really is neons ahead of the kit part. And you'll also notice that I created the pistol port that's been welded in place, as for a run of the Sherman's production, some of these turrets had their pistol ports welded shut. So moving down to the hull, so I had quite a bit of detail to this, including adding the well seams to the Apple K armor, just using the stretch sprue method, and adding my own tie downs using Tamiya tape, which I have a full video tutorial in the link description, or in the description of this video, should I say. As I bumped the camera all over the place. I also added the cast texture to the gun mantlet and the cast numbering, again using the Archer Fine transfer set. And also I added some chains to the fuel filler caps, so uh, the retaining chains. So moving on to the glazes, so I added quite a bit of extra detail to this, including replacing the kit brush cards for the um, headlights with resin replacement items from Tiger Model Design. Again, these are a little bit fragile and can be a bit warped in places, so you just have to take your time cleaning them and aligning them correctly. But they are a very fine replacement to the kit parts. Alternatively, you could use 3D printer parts that might be a little bit easier, really. I also added, again, the cast texture using Mr. Surfacer. And if you note, I have added the General Steel logo to the Glacis plate, which is that shield with the G in it. So these were responsible for manufacturing most of the cast upper hulls for the M4A1 family. And their logo, which I believe they brought in on 43, was a shield with a G in it. Um, it's very prevalent if you look at some of the surviving photos of um, M4A1. I also added, if you look very carefully, you might make it out, hopefully it's visible in the video, I added the wiring for the horn using 0.3mm brass, or sorry, copper wire, which I uh, just uh, fed through to the horn and then drilled the guide hole through the, uh, the glazes plate. An extra simple little detail to add, and something that I've always kind of neglected in past builds, but it does add us that little bit extra of interest. 
You'll also notice that um, I added some very faint or very fine well seams to the um, mounting brackets for the travel lock, just to add that extra bit of detail. And again, that's just with stretch sprue. Very simple detail to add, but I, I found it, it just added that little extra bit of life to the, the glazes. And then moving on to probably one of the most striking features of um, the Normandy Shermans as a whole, or a lot of the American fighting vehicles that took part in the Normandy breakout, and that is the hedgerow cutters, sometimes known as Cullen cutters or as rhinos. Um, these were actually all built by various different uh, manufacturer units, basically um, workshops that were behind the front line, like fabricator units, and they made them out of uh, scrap metal from the tank hedgehogs that, or the tank traps that were left on the Normandy beaches. So I just took the kit supplied piece and I just added my own well seams, again using stretch sprue, as well as adding cut marks to um, the various untreated sides, if you like, just to see that, just to imply that these were made out of sheet metal or again from those eye beams from those tank traps that were cut up using acetylene torches. There is a lot of different versions of these edge row cutters. Some of them are quite complex like this one and others are just simple almost like battering rams of eye beams that have been, um, that have been cut into teeth if you like that are just welded directly onto the hull. So moving up to the co-driver and driver hatches. So I added quite a bit of detail to this including adding the springs to the hatches so basically all these spring all these hatches were spring loaded that would just help the crew open these up in a hurry i also added the cast numbering to the uh, the hatch bulges that you can kind of make out there and then on the open hatch again it has its spring you can't really see it uh, the way the hatch is and also i added a another tiger model design resin replacement for the driver's uh, periscope mount again it's just a nicer detail than the kits one it's quite basic especially if, if you want to have the whole housing for the periscope visible it's, it's not really included in the yasuka model uh, periscopes i also added on both hatches some uh, the grab handles were replaced with brass wire so this is probably the most detailed hatch i had done at that at this point it really does add a lot of character. I'm quite, quite, uh, quite happy I went to that extra little bit of uh, effort. Moving down to the bogies, I have a full video on how I detailed these. So do check out that video in the uh, video description. And uh, I added the, uh, the various different bolts and guide holes for uh, the bogies, as well as um, damage some of the road wheels just that the, the rubber has been worn down from use, just to give it a bit more of a battle uh, scared look. The final little bits I added were some resin pieces from Value Gear, which is the the two ration boxes on the glazes plate, as well as a few scrap pieces or a few leftover resin items from Legend Productions that I had in my spare box. I didn't want to add too much stowage to this M4, as once they're in combat operations, they tend to maybe not to add as much storage because they're not doing long road marches. So I kind of didn't want to go too crazy. Um, again, we have a little few here, the engine deck and some of the cast texture on the um, engine hatches and the uh, fuel filler caps, as well as the retaining chains and some of the fuel um, labels that I added. And they're again from the Tiger model design set. They're those small photo etch um, fuel labels. Might be a little bit inaccurate. Um, however, I, I find uh, it just it was a nice detail, detail to add. And another few details I added to the engine deck where a resin tie down clamp for the tow cable just right behind the engine deck and also two replacement brush guards for the tail lights which are the asymmetrical version again these are from tiger model design and these are more synonymous with pressed steel m4a ones so guys there you have it i hope you found this a little bit interesting and maybe give you some ideas what you can do for your shermans i hope i haven't droned on too much uh, guys thank you so much for watching I've been Shane and I'll catch you the next video.